um, so the message is about leaven. And uh, the Bible talks uh, about leaven a number of times and says you put a little bit of leaven in and it, uh, pretty soon sure it spreads throughout the lump of uh, dough. So let's go back to what is leaven anyway. Well, it's yeast. And uh, yeast is very small. It's microscopic. You can't see it. So how did they, how did they come up with leaven to begin with? In olden days, they would take a, an empty dish and just set it out in the field or out in the pasture and and uh, they didn't know exactly what it was they couldn't see anything and but they just let something accumulate on it something that was invisible and then they would take it in and they would uh, take the uh, flour and the uh, they make dough out of the wheat flour and uh, then they'd begin to work it in on that uh, uh, piece of uh, that uh, um, that dish that they had set out in the field earlier and so uh, they didn't know exactly what they were doing, but when they took that dough and worked in that invisible thing that was there on the dish, just uh, something that came from the air, then they could set the dough uh, by the fire and the, the dough would begin to rise. And if it didn't have this uh, yeast in it, then it would just be a, a hard, uh, flat piece of bread uh, called unleavened bread. But uh, once the leaven got into it, it's microscopic, but it began to work its way all the way through it, and it would transform that dough uh, mm. so that no longer was it just a little uh, wafer-like, but it, it began to to rise up mm. and to become begin to be spongy and a totally different and a, a wonderful thing, and and they've known this for. Uh, ages upon ages, uh, that, this is the the leaven, and once the leaven begins to get into the dough, uh, then it would cause the whole, all of the dough to rise up, and that's what the kingdom does. The kingdom is mm, like leaven. Hallelujah. Now, after that, then they could just keep a, a little bit of that dough back, and that would be the fermented dough, and they could add a little bit of dough. Uh, to the next uh, little uh, bit of leaven, a, a little bit of leaven into that next uh, or fermented dough, and uh, that contained that leaven in it, and they would add that to the next uh, bread that they were wanting to uh, bake, and so that put it someplace else in another piece of dough, and pretty soon the dough, when the heat was applied to uh -huh. it, the dough would when the heat. Remember that when the heat would uh, apply to it, then the 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 dough would begin to rise. A totally different uh, product uh, if you've got that yeast in there. And so, uh, of course, uh, it says if you put the uh, First Corinthians five verses six through eight says that if you put a little bit of leaven into a lump, it'll spread throughout. And and it's really in that case, it's talking about sin because uh, it talks about malice and wickedness. And so you put a little bit of sin in your life. And so the dough can be like our, our life. And uh, if we put a sin in there after a while, it's going to impact every part of our life. And uh, Jesus also talked about the leaven of Herod and the politics and the leaven of the religious system. Uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, in Mark chapter 8. But we're not going to go into there because we're focusing on the leaven of the kingdom because, and this is the core curve of a verse, it's Matthew uh, 13, verse um, 33, verse 33, 33 says that uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a leaven that a woman takes and hides in mm -hmm. uh, some a measure of flour and dough, and pretty soon, it's all leavened. Uh, so we know from the uh, the parable then that you put a little bit in, and so it's the kingdom. Well, uh, obviously that's the very positive thing. And uh, so Jesus told us what was the purpose of the parables. He said the purpose of the parables is this, so that you'll know the secrets uh, mm -hmm. of the kingdom. You'll know the mm -hmm. secrets that have been 
hidden for ages. And so mm. the one we're going to be really looking at then is Matthew 13. And if you look at that whole chapter, there are actually seven, seven. seven uh, parables presented. The first three are seed, about seed, and some are good and some are bad, some are big and some are small. So, but they're all <laughs> seed. And the seed uh, changes mm. and transforms and grows and produces uh, a product and produces uh, many seed. Okay. And, and the fourth one, though, is about the parable of leaven, the kingdom leaven. Mm. And, and so all seven of these are about the kingdom. And it's to tell us secrets. And it's telling things that people knew about in those days. We know about these kinds of things. These are things that happen on the earth. But it shows us things that happen in the heaven, in the supernatural realm. And so he always started with talking about things that happened in the natural that we know about, but he's re he is directing us and guiding us to the supernatural realm. So the centerpiece of uh, Matthew 13, of the seven parables, the centerpiece is the kingdom leaven. Mm -hmm. And so the next three uh, are about uh, good things, mm -hmm. uh, good and bad things. And, uh, uh, treasures and and things like pearls and other other treasures and things that are good and things that are so there's no no transformation in the in the last three there's no transformation it's just you find a good thing and uh, if there's bad things you throw it away but the fourth one is so important because there is transformation and, and it's transformation. And so it's that leaven, and it's going to transform the dough. It's going to transform everything it touches. It's going to, mm. and that's a really important thing. And, and if it was seed, it'd be like uh, the seed uh, transforming the ground in which it's planted. But, of course, it's yeast in this case, and so it's the leaven. But, but it's totally different than the others, but it, it, it's the centerpiece I believe of these seven parables, and these tell us the secrets of the kingdom, and we need to know these things. These things were hidden uh, throughout the ages, but they're being revealed to you by the Spirit of God, and, and that is that is exciting. And I, I want to start now with a story about my life and, and about how this message, the kingdom message, affected me. And uh, Eleven. Yeah, the, kingdom. the kingdom message <clears throat> and, and how it began to operate like leaven. And, and that is for years, I heard many ministers uh, preach on the gospel of the kingdom. And uh, I affirmed it. I, could, I thought, oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, and, and so one would plant, another would water, but it was beginning uh, to take place in my life. There was something growing in my life. Uh, for the first uh, many times I heard about the kingdom message, uh, there really wasn't a change in me. I, I began to understand the kingdom. I, we talked about a lot of different parables. People, uh, different ministers ministered about the different parables. But one day, uh, as I was listening to a prophet talk about the kingdom message, the kingdom came alive to me. That's when the leaven uh, had worked its way through every mm, part of my mm. body. And I remember the day. It was a day yes. th that I came alive to the kingdom. The kingdom came alive to me, and I became a son of the kingdom. And it affected my life. It changed my life. And I don't know if, if you've gotten to that point or not. But, but let me tell you, we're going to activate the kingdom in your life today Amen. if you're ready for it. Uh, maybe you've already experienced the same thing I experienced. It wasn't because that prophet uh, spoke anything different that I, had, that I had not heard before. But it was just by the Spirit of God because the message uh, had been inside of me, had been working and growing, and the Word of God on the kingdom and I began to believe the kingdom. And that day, on that day, uh, then the kingdom became alive to me. I became alive to the kingdom. And I have been changed ever since. Hallelujah. And, and I'll never be the same because the kingdom came alive to me. 
uh, that leaven had been working invisibly for all those years and all that, all that time because I had heard um, different preachers preach about the kingdom and different parables of the kingdom and talk about the kingdom and it all made sense to me but but it wasn't alive it didn't come alive but on that day it became alive and, and changed me uh, forever and, and uh, uh, then I want to go down to verse uh, 38 out of uh, Matthew 13 a and it says that the son of man is going to be sowing uh, in the field and, and in the field he's going to sow good seeds and the good seeds uh, I want you to read this the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom Amen. Matthew thirteen thirty eight. the field is the world the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom we who believe the message of the kingdom of God are the seeds that this farmer is spreading throughout the earth. The seed is the reality of Christ. Okay, so here it is, just a, an explanation of it, that it says the sons of the kingdom. Now, I want to look at that phrase for a moment, the sons of the kingdom. It means these are the people for which the kingdom was prepared. And they belong mm, to the kingdom. They hallelujah. Are sons hallelujah. Of the kingdom. They belong to the kingdom. Mm, and that's mm, that's mm, who mm, I am. And everyone can be mm, one of these sons of the kingdom. But I but I'm asking you to think about it for yourself. Do you perceive yourself? Is this your identity? Do you see yourself as one of the sons of the kingdom? Because that's what Jesus talks mm -hmm. about here. Now the word he used uh, in the Greek is wios. And weos means mature sons. Now, when a baby is born, uh, and, and let's say it's a boy, then uh, it's a son. But but it's n that son is not in rulership uh, position yet. And, and so that son may uh, grow up and grow and be a toddler and then grow and be a teenager and all, but but the father hasn't turned the business over to that son until he becomes mature. So he can begin working in the business. You know, when Jesus was 12, he said, I must be about my father's, father's business. business. And so he was. And But one day uh, the father uh, said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well, well pleased. pleased. And know. so at that point, there was a declaration made uh, to the to. Uh, the community there of all Israel that Jesus had come of age. He had come of age and the father was turning the business over to him. And then we began to see Jesus operating by the power of the Holy Spirit and doing great and mighty works and miracles because he came to that age. Well, that's what the sons of the kingdom are. They are the mature sons, mature sons, mm -hmm. mature sons of God. They have reached that age. They have... They have been working in the father's business. They've been tending, whether it be a farm or a vineyard or whatever was they were assigned to, they were working in that. And now they are a mature, they are the father's turning the business over to them. Now, there are, are seven things I want to say about the sons of um, the kingdom. And uh, uh, I'll just say that the kingdom was prepared for these sons. Amen. And I want you to think about that. Does this apply to you? The kingdom was mm -hmm. a, was prepared for for them. And they it was bequeathed to them. The kingdom was bequeathed to them. And uh, it, they were appointed to the kingdom. And uh, they are possessed of the kingdom and they are fit for the kingdom and they are mm, heirs mm, of the mm. kingdom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they have a right to the kingdom. So they're just those seven uh, points I want to, to mention to you. And, and that, that became alive to me on that particular day. Not because I had not heard the message, but I had heard the message over and over again. But it had to grow. It had to become alive to me. It had to spread out over my whole being. That's what the leaven of the kingdom does. It's invisible. You can't see it. Uh, but you see the effect of it. And it starts on the inside. See, Luke 
uh, 17 verses 20 and 21 says that the kingdom comes without observation. You can't see it. That's like that yeast. You just take a piece of uh, a dish, just an empty dish and mm -hmm. say it out of the and there's something that go, comes in there and that's the leaven of the kingdom. You, you don't see it, but you, get, you put it in the dough and it begins to it begins to work its way throughout the dough and, and you set it by the fire and, and pretty soon Ooh, the, hallelujah. the dough begins to rise and then you can make bread and it's spongy mm. and it, it's not that little hard wafer. It It is a big uh, piece of uh, bread and, and you know it said uh, in Matthew 13, uh, 33 that the woman hid it in three measures and, and uh, my uh, what I did on the research said that that was enough to feed 300 people. So we're not talking about when it's had its effect. It's not just a little effect. It's a big effect. Mm -hmm, and everything mm -hmm. that the kingdom a message touches, it's going to change. It's going to transform. It's transformed my life. I, mean, I think differently. It has, it, it has, uh, I'm enamored with the kingdom message. I, I'm filled mm -hmm. with the love mm -hmm. for the kingdom message. Hallelujah. And it didn't happen overnight. It was a little by little, a little by little, but it, it began to work in my life. And I want you just to read uh, some of these uh, uh, verses uh, about the, you know, the kingdom that it's prepared for us. And we know from Matthew 25 mm -hmm. uh, that uh, there's a kingdom prepared for us. Here you go. Amen. I do have it. Matthew 25. 34, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So there is a kingdom. Prepared. Hallelujah. Okay, read a few more of these verses. All right, Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I have a word for at least five people that are on this video, on this Zoom meeting, and that is you are to forget those things that are behind and look toward the things that God has for you in the future because he has good things for you. He has prepared a wealthy place for you, a wealthy place for you in the spirit a wealthy place for you in the physical realm. the But he has prepared those places for you. And so no longer are you to look behind you, but you are to look forward. Okay. We're fit for the kingdom. For, to be fit for the kingdom right. of God. Okay. Then James 2, 5. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him. Okay. Do you love him? Are you rich in faith? Amen. Then you can inherit the kingdom. Okay. A couple of more. Hallelujah. Luke twenty-two twenty-nine, And I bestow upon you a kingdom such as my father bestowed one upon me. Okay. The same kingdom that Hallelujah. the father gave Jesus. He's now turned around. He's given it to you. Okay. Amen. Matthew 13, 37 and 38. Jesus answered, The man who planted or sowed the good seed is the field, is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are all the God's children who belong to the kingdom, the sons of the kingdom. Do you belong to the kingdom? Does the kingdom possess you oh well, hallelujah. hallelujah it does it does oh it possesses me oh it possesses us uh, hallelujah oh that's good hallelujah now the sons of the kingdom are going to rule in life they're going to rule in life by one christ jesus you know that's what uh, uh romans 5 17 talks about rule mm -hmm. in life now to, to be a ruler in life though hey, you're a servant you're, you're developed to mm -hmm. be a servant the mm -hmm. greatest uh, see, in the Among kingdom, you. <laughs> is going to be the servant mm -hmm. of all. So in Matthew 23, 11 and 12. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay. 
So, Hallelujah. so who is going to be in the kingdom, inherit the kingdom, uh, point into the kingdom, have a right to the kingdom? It's it's the servants, the servants of all. They're the greatest. And so there are really two parts of this message. The first part is the kingdom is inside of you. It's like leaven and let it work its way until it comes all of your thinking. It covers all of your thinking and every, all of your thinking mm. is about kingdom. It, mm. it comes out of the kingdom. And of course, that's the Holy Spirit. The, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, peace and joy, joy in, in the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Ghost. So yeah. it's in the realm of the Holy Spirit, the realm where the Holy Spirit is working. That's what the kingdom is. And, and so you, you begin to meditate on that message. You hear that message. And let that message get down in you and it will begin to work inside of you like leaven and, and it will begin to affect your life. It'll affect your body. It'll heal your body. I, I had a healing today. Yes. Hallelujah. I, hallelujah. I, I was healed today. I had, uh, uh, I was walking and uh, of course I've had some uh, problem in the knee for, for quite a while. And I, I just uh, prayed over it and, uh, and the pain wasn't just pain, but it was a stiffness and all of that went away. Praise God. So I had a healing today. So that's the kingdom. That's the kingdom in operation. That's demonstrating the kingdom. And it just, it starts invisible, like uh, just on a dish out in the pasture. You couldn't see anything in there, but it's there and it's working inside of you. So you meditate on, on that message. So then the kingdom begins to take over your life. It begins to, oh, it hallelujah. Begins to possess you. It begins to mm, change your thinking, mm, and mm. change everything about you. And it changes your behavior and it changes the way oh, that you interact hallelujah. with hallelujah. other people. And so that's all the first part of the message. Amen. The second <laughs> part of the message is here in uh, um, uh, Luke chapter 19. And it's, the parable of the um, because the people the disciples of jesus were wanting to have the kingdom they thought the kingdom was going to come as an invading army mm -hmm. uh, but see now we've seen that the kingdom comes in a different way it comes it's invisible like leaven working its way Ooh, hallelujah. Through. Hallelujah. but now we're going to go more to uh, an aggregate uh, approach to it it starts with the individual and it affects the individual's thinking it affects the individual's behavior and and now we're going to look at uh the parable that jesus talked about uh about uh Mida. Uh, midas uh, Mida. yeah look at the order uh, Luke 19, 11 through 17. Okay. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable to them because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. So this is about the kingdom. It's and to return. Okay. And so he called 10 of his servants delivered to them 10 Midas and said to them, how do you spell that word? M-I-N-A-S. Minus. 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 Okay. So what is a minor? Well, uh, my, one of my uh, Bible said that it was about three months wages. And so you can think about how much you can earn in three months or an average person might earn in, in three months. So it was a pretty good amount. It wasn't mm -hmm. just a few pennies. It, it was, it was quite, a, it's what, uh, an average person would earn in about three months of wages. And so mm -hmm. he gave that to each one of 10 uh, servants. He gave uh, a one a unit to each of these, and uh, some of them began to trade. Now, one, of course, we know mm -hmm. hit it in the ground, but we're not focusing on that one today because what I want you to see is that it starts with an individual and, and you know, it, as this leaven begins to work in your life or the life of an individual, it begins to change the way they begin to think, the way they begin to uh, operate. Mm -hmm. and, and then here's one that's successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so go ahead and read about this. One. Well, he says, uh, after he, he gave them uh, the Midas, he says, do business till I come. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money 
to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first one saying, Master, uh, your money has earned 10, 10 times. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority, listen to this, over 10 cities. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Amen. I said there are two parts to this message. First, it's the individual. It's the leaven of the kingdom operating in the individual. And then they begin to know how to operate in the kingdom. And so he was telling this so that people would understand the kingdom. The kingdom begins in your life, in the life of each individual who trusts in the Lord Jesus. It's a part of uh, the salvation message, of course. Uh, and, and there it is. You've got the kingdom. And after a while, you begin to trade and behave uh, like you're operating in the kingdom and you, you become successful. Uh, and, and then when you come back and, and show your work and your progress to the, to the king or to the Lord, uh, then he's going to say, well done. Uh, you've been faithful. In yes, a little. Yes. I'm going to give you authority mm. over 10 cities. Hallelujah. Okay, now, what is authority over 10 cities? I, I'm, I'm talking about who's going to reign that the servant is the greatest. Who's going to reign in life? The servant is the greatest. And, and so when he says you're going to be over 10 cities, it means you're going to have influence. You're going to have influence. Mm, hallelujah. Your prayers over 10 cities, over oh, cities. Hallelujah. Is going to impact. See, this is the way the kingdom works. It starts with an individual. You plant the seed. You plant that uh, that yeast, that uh, leaven, leaven of the kingdom inside there. It begins to work inside of them and, and changes their heart. They're, they're transformed. Their mind is transformed. Uh, but then they begin to, the very, their behavior, the way they operate is transformed. And and, and then you think, well, okay, they've, they've got authority over a city. Uh, and, and the day they were given authority, that's uh, that may have been a suddenly, it may have looked like a suddenly, but there was actually a process uh, going on day after day, a process. That's what happened in me. They began to preach the gospel of the kingdom to me. It began to go down. It was a seed first. And then others came and they watered it and, and it began to grow as a plant and it began to transform my thinking, my life, my body, my everything I did. And then it began to change my behavior and I began to treat people differently and I began to uh, trade with money. I traded to, with this. I did this. I did that. I did things. It was all because of the kingdom became alive to me. And then I was given authority by the king Amen. Uh, of kings uh, uh, to impact uh, groups of people. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and, and, and the more I did that, the more that I was faithful in what I was doing, the more authority I had. Glory to God. And that's how the gospel of the kingdom is going to be proclaimed over the earth. See, this is what's going to, to transform the cities and transform the nations and transform the nations because our God has given Jesus mm -hmm. Christ the nations. Oh, and, and hallelujah. The way, the hallelujah. way he's going to hallelujah. inherit the nations is that through an individual here and there, they get the kingdom message. The kingdom message begins to, mm -hmm. to grow in the inside of them and transform their life and transform their thinking and transform their behavior and transform everything they do. And, and then they begin to transform and touch other people's lives because now they're not operating in that same old harsh way, old mean way, old negative way. That Their whole attitude has changed and they begin to, to change people's lives and change people's thinking and, and their prayers become effective and they, they can have influence on, on neighborhoods mm -hmm. and on, on cities and, and over regions. And Hallelujah. see, years ago, God began to give us uh, influence over cities and over regions. Uh, we began having uh, influence over this city and over the 
uh, surrounding cities and we would do uh, Bible studies here and we'd do Bible studies around, but we'd intercede wherever we were. We'd be interceding for those cities and pulling down corruption and uh, strongholds. Raising, strongholds of the devil and raising up uh, godly leaders and bringing forth revival and, uh, through our prayers and believing and proclamations. Uh, so we began to impact regions and then God would send us out to different nations and we would go to their capitals. You can't imagine how many capital cities mm -hmm. that, that he has sent us to. And we've gone through and walked through um, downtowns of uh, major capitals or, or around the world. And we prayed and interceded uh, for those uh, uh, nations because now we're kingdom people. We're sons of the kingdom. And again, mm. sons are, are not male or female. In Christ, there is neither male, male nor female. female. It, it's about uh, it's about being a child of the Most High God, who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. He's the Spirit, and He's the Father of spirits. Hallelujah! And He's light, and He's the Spirit. He's the Father of lights, and you are a light, and your city hit on a Hallelujah. on a hill. Hallelujah. Glory to God! Now mm. let's get down to application. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with this message? Well, you've got to have the kingdom message inside of you. It's got to be planted in you and it's got to be watered and it's got to be attended. Your, your fields have to be tended, but there also has to be some heat put Woo! put to the Hallelujah, put, put to, to the leaven. leaven. We've got to put some heat to it. Oh, now, hallelujah. Where, where is the heat going to come from? Well, John the Baptist said mm -hmm. that there's one coming. And he's going to baptize. baptize you. Okay, read this, Jerry. Mm, Luke 3.16. Mm -hmm. Luke 3.16. John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, you've got to be around the fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> See, the dough's not going to rise if it's mm, not around, around the fire. The fire. You, you got to have that fire. Put the fire to the dough. Oh, amen. The kingdom, Hallelujah. The leaven of the kingdom is going to begin to rise. It's going to mm, transform, you, transform your thinking, thank you, transform Jesus. the way you operate, the way you treat people. It's going. Everything's going to be transformed. Then, then he's going to send you out to transform cities. Cities. Oh, hallelujah! 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 Where hallelujah. are you? Hallelujah. Where are you? He wants to send you out. And then one day uh, there were some men walking with Jesus and he began to open the scriptures to them. And they said, whoop, didn't our hearts, hearts burn, burn within, within us? us. Jerry, read this. Luke 24, 24, 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scriptures to us. Hallelujah. 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 Now. On the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. when the time was right, Hallelujah! People were praying and they were in unity, and something happened in the upper room. That's Read exactly right. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there were appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire and one that set upon each of them. Oh, the Hallelujah. fire. Have you had the baptism yeah, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit and fire? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have not, today's your day. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire even today. You don't hallelujah. have to go out here without it. And get, get close to the Lord and let him reveal his scriptures to you. You by mm -hmm, your spirit and mm -hmm, your heart, mm -hmm. your heart will burn within you. Now, another thing we can do to get ready and have this fire burning within us is to present our bodies a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. And, uh, you know, the thing about God's sacrifices, they all are with fire. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. With fire. <laughs> and without fire, he doesn't accept, uh, he doesn't accept the, the messages. Yeah. All right, read hallelujah. this first year. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Okay. And I think about uh, what Brother Fred said about that the leaven 
will transform us and so that we're not conformed to this world. We don't have to behave like this world. We don't have to do the same things this world does, but we can be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Okay. So I just want to go back uh, and, and bring things to closure here and say there were the message had two parts to it. There's the leaven of the kingdom that's in you mm -hmm. as a believer, mm -hmm. and it begins to transform you, particularly as you get around the fire, the fire of the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can do that by praying in tongues. You can get do that by being around other believers be who are on fire, on fire. Uh, for God. And, and be passionate about it. Let your prayers be passionate. Let them be uh, full of fire, white, white hot. Uh, fire, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh, as that kingdom leaven begins to take place in your life and and transform you, then you are given authority over other mm -hmm. regions, not to go in there with a, a rod, uh, a, an iron rod to break them up and do all of that, but with prayer and intercession, oh, hallelujah. pray and walk and uh, the relationships that you build and you as a servant see you begin to release the kingdom into other people and you begin to release the kingdom uh with, mm, that's mm, within mm, them mm. you begin to release those people into the communities well, change hallelujah, lives, hallelujah. lives as a servant the greatest of all is the servant the greatest of all these is the servant so that's the message that's the kingdom message mm. it's changed my life it's transformed me, and I believe that it has something I wouldn't dare go back and not have. And so I encourage all mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. to want this kingdom leaven in your life to change you, to transform you, to be tr transformed from glory to glory in the image of, of the Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Amen. Thank you for being here. I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment, but I do want to say that I'm excited about this message and I want to be sown by the king himself. I want to be that seed that he sows and puts into uh, the, the nations and puts into the cities and puts into the regions. Uh, I want, I want to be sown by the Lord and and so, and, and I want that leaven to, to, to rise in me, uh, that there's influence there. There's authority there. Uh, there's power of the Holy Spirit there. I want to stay around people that are full of the Holy Spirit on fire for the Lord. 